Chapter 24 Money, Your New Best Friend I worked for a menial's hire, only to learn, dismayed, that any wage I asked of life, life would have willingly paid. Anonymous Many years ago, Los Angeles was hit by a relentless rainstorm, the likes of which I'd never seen in my life. It rained for what seemed like 40 days and 40 nights, nonstop and hard. Rivers overflowed, houses slid down hillsides, bad hair wreaked chaos throughout the most image-conscious city in the world. This was the kind of rain you didn't want to be driving around in in anything, let alone a 23-year-old junker convertible with a leaky roof, no grill, a back window that was duct tape shut, and a front tire that went flat every three days. I'd been in the market for a new car for a long time and couldn't find anything I really loved or thought I could afford. But as I sat there in a puddle, driving to the supermarket with a trash bag under my ass and an old t-shirt slammed in the door to keep the leaking to a minimum, it occurred to me that perhaps I should speed up my search. At the time, I didn't have a whole lot of money, but I had my own business that I was trying to grow. The problem was I felt stuck in that place where even though I wanted bigger and better things for myself monetarily, as well as feeling more mighty and self-actualized in general, I was worried that if I raised my prices, I'd lose all my clients and my self-respect, or that I'd get called out as a money-grubbing pig or a fraud who had no right to charge that much. I was also scared that if I went big and grew my business, I wouldn't be able to handle it. I'd have to hire tons of people, spend my time doing things I hated, and get so busy I'd never get to travel again. Basically, that I'd wither and die trapped behind my computer fun and freedom skidding away in my rearview mirror, never to be seen again. Blah, blah, blah. I could talk for about four more hours explaining why I was where I was, but suffice it to say, I was basically playing at the level of someone who drives around in a car like the one I was driving around in. And the most painful part really was that even though all signs pointed to broke, clueless, and stuck, deep down I knew I could be doing so much better. Which is why, even though the sound of crickets could be heard echoing throughout my empty bank account, I wandered into the Audi dealership, took the brand new Q5 for a spin, and let the sales guy rattle on and on about leather this and premium that. In my head I was thinking, do you have any idea who I am? I'm just taking a fantasy break before heading over to Honda. But in my heart, I knew better. Way down deep, it was about much more than just a damn car. It was about no longer being the kind of person who takes what she can get and finally becoming the kind of person who creates exactly what she wants. It was large, Marge, and because part of me was terrified to grow and part of me wanted to blast out and be huge, and also because I love to drive more than I love to eat, I tortured myself over which car to buy for weeks. I finally whittled it down to two options. The Honda CRV, a perfectly excellent little SUV with all the following attributes. Okay gas mileage, a sunroof, room for friends, a comfy ride, a ho-hum stereo, reasonably fun to drive, decently priced, or the Audi Q5 a stick of butter on four wheels with the following attributes. Okay gas mileage, a sunroof that takes up the entire roof of the car, room for friends, big, fat, and tall ones, leather seats you could have a sexual relationship with, a stereo designed by God himself, angels sing when you open the doors, sexy, flashy, expensive, pretentious, terrifying. I came very close to buying the Honda, but as I sat there, test driving it for the tenth time, trying to convince myself that this was the one, I couldn't shake the nagging truth that I was in love with someone else. Buying the Honda would have been the sensible thing to do, but I knew that adventure, true love, and a whole new way of life awaited me on the other side of my comfort zone. Blasting through this comfort zone is what I want to talk about here. Purchasing the Audi should have had me waking up screaming in the middle of the night because it costs the kind of money I would normally only consider spending on something like mandatory heart surgery, certainly not on something as frivolous as a car. 
But after I bought it, I slept like a baby. Because once I made the decision to buy it, I also made the decision to get over my shit and become the kind of person who can make the kind of money to buy that kind of car or who can do anything else I want to do. I almost instantly came up with a way to pay off the Audi and I'm certain that if I'd bought the Honda, I'd still be struggling to pay for it. Because I'd still be playing small, I'd still be in the mindset that I can't afford more, that I'm the kind of person who has to struggle to get whatever she can, that I can't break out of my mold and go get something completely quote unquote out of my reach, etc. When you up-level your idea of what's possible and decide to really go for it, you open yourself up to the means to accomplish it as well. I'm not talking about going out and recklessly blowing all your money on stupid crap. I'm talking about expanding your beliefs about what is available to you in all areas of your life. And for the purposes of this chapter, I'm going to focus on what kind of money you believe is here for you to purchase the things and experiences you truly desire. Whether or not the money is currently in your bank account is irrelevant. I didn't have the money either when I bought my new car. When you're available to play a bigger game, i.e. quit your ho-hum job and invest in your own business, buy a new house, send your kids to private school, hire a coach, hire a house cleaner, buy a new mattress, etc., you either need to pay for it with the money you have or manifest the money if you don't have it already. And manifesting it is going to be pretty damn hard if you insist that not only is it not there for you, but that you aren't the kind of person who could ever make it or pay it off if you borrowed it. In order to transform your life, you may have to spend the money you do have, get a loan, sell something, borrow from a friend, put it on your credit card, or manifest it in some other way which is going to go against some pretty deep-seated beliefs we've all been raised with about how going into debt is irresponsible. Unless it's a student loan, of course, because for some reason we've decided in that case, and that case only, it's okay. This is about taking a leap of faith into a new realm that you strongly desire to be in, demanding of yourself that you rise to the occasion and start living your damn life already. After I took my great leap into luxury car land, I made multiple six figures with my business for the first time ever, began traveling the world on a regular basis, got my third book deal, made huge donations, for me anyway, to causes I'm really passionate about, and helped my clients achieve similar personal bests too. Here's the thing. Making money isn't only about the money, just as losing weight isn't only about losing weight, and finding your soulmate isn't only about finding your soulmate. It's about who you become and what you believe is possible for yourself. Money is currency and currency is energy. As we've discussed, we live in a universe that is vibrating with energy. Our universe is abundant and everything you desire is here, in this moment, waiting for you to shift your perception and your energy and receive it, money included. Money is energy like anything else. And when you're operating at a high frequency with no resistance to it and take right action, you can manifest the money you desire. We all know that we have to work to make money. We've been taught that all our lives. But what we're not taught is that we must also align our energy with the financial abundance we seek. In other words, act as if you're where you want to be. Don't hang out with sad sacks and people who whine about how broke they are all the time. Erase the words, I can't, from your vocabulary. Envision what you desire, set goals, and demand of yourself that you become who you need to become to create the life you desire. Our relationship to money is just as important as the action we take to manifest it, which is one reason why so many people who work their asses off their whole lives but who have lousy energy around money are left wondering why they have nothing to show for it. Here's a little one-sided dialogue that may or may not sound familiar to you. Yay! I think you're fun to hang out with, too! Wait, what? You think I'm the root of all evil? How can you say that? All you talk about is how you wish you had more of me, even though you're scared to admit you like me. And you say I'm not there for you. And you think people who like me are greedy pigs. Yet you get so ecstatic whenever I show up. And you work so hard to get me to come over. But I keep you in a constant state of worry and you hate dealing with me. And no matter what I do, it's never enough. One minute you act like you'll die without me, and the next I make you feel like a filthy whore. You know what? I'm done. See you later, freak. 
Considering that this, or some version of this, is the sort of relationship most people have with money, I don't think the question is, why can't we make the kind of money we want? I think the better question is, how the hell do we expect to? Most people have such conflicted feelings around money that they turn it into a full-on circus, rivaled only by the equally popular freak shows surrounding religion and sex. All three are crammed to the brim with issues and anxieties and staunch fight-to-the-death beliefs that cause them to bring so much sadness to the world. Meanwhile, if everyone would just chill out, sex, money, and religion could be the leading causes of joy. Silly, ain't we? In order to bring money joyfully into our lives, we have to understand that we're having a relationship with it, and then treat it like any other important and meaningful relationship. We need to pay attention to it, want it, nurture it, put effort into it, respect it, cherish it, love it, etc. Ridding yourself of your fear and loathing of money, be it conscious or subconscious, is essential if you want to make any. I was extremely poverty proud for so long. I felt I was so much nobler in my pursuit of art and fun and altruism than those people who wasted their lives just going after money. No way in hell was I going to sacrifice my awesome life just to chase the filthy dollar. No, instead I was going to choose between having health insurance or a place to live. I was going to spend precious time that I could have spent uh, making money driving an extra 30 blocks to the gas station where I could save three cents a gallon, sifting through piles of clothes in search of the gems at Goodwill, clipping coupons, hunting down sales, researching which bars had free food at happy hour, productive things like that. In my quest to make money an inconsequential part of my life, I was basically thinking about it more than anyone who actually had money ever thought about it. What I didn't realize was that it's not an either or situation. I could make great money and keep my integrity and have more fun and make more art and help more people and make a bigger difference in the world. Oh, I just had to get over myself. I had to stop working with the equation that wanting slash having money equals greedy scumbag. And I had to get a freaking plan. First rule of wealth consciousness, come from a place of abundance, not lack. When we say we want money for something, we often come from a place of, I don't have it, it does not exist, so I need to create it. This has us focusing on and believing in lack, thereby lowering our frequency and attracting more lack. When we say, I am manifesting five grand to go on a trip to Italy, you just watch me. Our faith in the yet unseen is strong and our frequency is high. Thus, so is our ability to attract money. This is why buying the car worked so well for me. It forced me to face my fears and strengthen my faith because I bought it before I had the proof that the money was there. I don't see the money, but I believe it's there and it will be mine, damn it. This abundance is available to everyone, including you, regardless of what your life looks like at this very moment. Some people are born into cushy lives full of trust funds and connections and opportunities and fancy educations. Some of these people go on to make great financial successes of their lives, and some of these people don't. Some people are born into extreme poverty and live in cardboard box houses by the side of a freeway. Some of these people go on to make great financial successes of their lives, and some of these people don't. While their obstacles and initial childhood impressions about money can be extremely different, those who achieve success share one key thing, the belief that they can be, do, and have whatever they set their minds to accomplishing. Your beliefs hold the key to your financial success. Believe that you can have what you desire, that it really truly already exists, and then go out and get it. Once you understand that we live in an abundant universe, you can also drop the limiting belief that you serve the world better by not taking too much for yourself or by getting too big. Your playing small simply withholds your gifts from the people who are meant to receive them, including you. Can you imagine if your favorite musicians never let themselves make enough money to buy guitars or take lessons or hire producers or buy purple platform boots and tight sparkly pants or pay thousands of dollars for studio time so they could record the songs that saved your ass in high school? 
Or if the people who build airplanes refuse to make the money they need to pay for the research and the materials and the factories and the engineers and the electricity and whatever plethora of other costly things that go into building the miraculous flying machines that allow us to travel the world, hang out on tropical beaches, and visit the people we love so dearly? The more you have, the more you have to share. There's plenty of money to go around. You not letting yourself make it doesn't save more for other people, just as you making it doesn't take it away from them. The only reason you should feel gross about accepting money for a product or a service is if you're scamming someone, not doing or giving them what you said you would, or if you're causing harm in some other way. It's all about contributing to the world by making life easier, happier, safer, healthier, better, tastier, more beautiful, more fun, more interesting, more thoughtful, more loving. Whatever you do, bring something good to the party. If you're coming from a place of integrity, any icky feelings you have about not deserving the wealth you desire are a waste of time. Just as any icky feelings you have about money itself are a waste of time. Greedy people do greedy things for money. So don't go getting all up in money's face and blame it for their lousy behavior. Here's a brilliant little spanking in this department from author speaker Marianne Williamson that I recently heard in a talk she gave. Having money is like anything else, a tool. And if you see it that way, making it not just about you, but about a way that you can play a part in the dynamic by which money is used for the betterment of all things, then having money is not only a blessing, it's a responsibility. Having money is a responsibility. Let your inner money critic chew on that one for a while, okay? Second rule of wealth consciousness. Get clear on where you're at. Write a little ditty about how you feel about money. Get clear on all your craziness around it because trust me, if you don't have any money, you definitely have some crazy. Write something along the lines of, so the truth is, I don't really trust money. I want lots of it so I can do whatever I want and make big changes in the world, but I don't believe it'll come to me. Or that if it does, it won't stick around. It never has. I resent needing it. I think people who make it are evil and have bad priorities. I ignore it because I hate dealing with it. I wouldn't know what to do with it if I made it anyway. If it's easier, pretend money is a person and write it as if you're writing a letter to someone. Just get it on the page so you can look at it. Then break it down, sentence by sentence, and expose your drama around money for the award-winning performance that it is. For example, I don't believe money will come to me. Has it ever? I guess so. Can you imagine a specific time and a specific amount that came to you that was really helpful and enjoyable? Yes, I was a graphic designer for five years. I got to work on a lot of really cool projects with great people, making good money. Any other times? Have you had other jobs or monetary gifts or dividends? Yes. Can you list off five to 10 significant times that money came to you? Okay. So if it came to you all these many times, is it possible that it could come to you again? Yeah. Can you change your belief from money doesn't come to me to money does come to me? Fine. Yes, I can. Now that you see the truth, focus on money coming to you. Imagine receiving all the money you need, visualize how you'll spend it, and feel it in your bones. Change your story from money doesn't come to me to money comes to me all the time. Make this an affirmation that you walk around saying in your mind out loud that you write down, read over and over, and tape to your bathroom mirror. Drill it into your brain and your bones. Another example. I resent needing it. How come? Because I never have enough to do what I want. Is this true? Have you ever had enough money to do what you want? Well, there have been some times where I've had the money. So is it true that you never have enough money to do what you want? No. And when you have the money you need to do what you want, do you resent needing it? Not really. How does it feel when you have it and you spend it on something you're really excited about buying for you or someone else? Pretty cool, actually. So is it true you resent needing it? No. Once you've caught yourself in your big fat lie, 
Focus on what it would feel like to spend money lavishly on yourself or the people you love or a cause you're passionate about or whatever and really feel it in your bones. Imagine receiving it and feel yourself filling up with gratitude for it coming to you. Be grateful to money for the awesome tool it is and for allowing you to feel so good. Replace the story, I resent needing money, with I'm grateful to money for helping me live such an awesome life. Start healing your relationship with money. Sit your broke ass down and write a letter to money and then break it down sentence by sentence like I just did. Really do this, please, and create some new money affirmations. Repeat your new affirmations and feel them in your bones. Walk around thinking about how much you love, love, love money. Did hearing that just make you throw up a little bit in your mouth? You're going against some seriously deeply ingrained beliefs here. Money is incredibly loaded for most people. So if you want to get over your issues and start making money, spend some time on this. You are rewriting a story that was written in blood by you and generations before you that you've been buying into your whole life. So it's going to take some effort to rewrite it and start living it. Third rule of wealth consciousness, get clear on where you desire to be. We all need money. We need it to feed ourselves, buy clothes, get shelter, water, medicine, etc. Once it goes beyond basic survival, however, and we get into the arena of how much money we quote unquote need, if we've got guilt and judgment and terror over what it means to have it and what people will think of us if we do, this is where all hell is going to break loose. Of course, none of us need more than the basics to survive. But if we're talking about blossoming into the fullest expressions of our best selves in an abundant universe, we do. Which is why I'm assuming you're listening to this book instead of one on how to distinguish edible berries from poisonous ones. You don't want to merely survive. You want to thrive in every area of your life, including the area of financial support. Being wealthy means having the resources to provide yourself with everything you need and desire to share your gifts with the world as your biggest, badassiest self. This means being wealthy psychologically, spiritually, and energetically, as well as materially. Let's say you've got your own clothing company. You need money to have a space to create your designs. You need to pay for materials, manufacturing, shipping, payroll, marketing, and all the other expenses of running your business. That's obvious, but you also need to feel healthy, happy, and good so you can do your best work and bring the most awesome products to your customers. Maybe you need to live and work in a place you love that inspires you or hire assistants so you're not exhausted and spread thin or do things that fill you with happiness like travel and buy your friends dinner or join a gym or get a puppy or buy clown noses for everyone in your office. Maybe you want to give 20% of your income to help drill water wells in Africa as well as hire more staff so you can donate some time to doing charity work. It all counts. Feeling like you don't deserve the things that make you the happiest and best version of yourself because it's greedy or is asking too much ultimately rips off the rest of the world because you aren't being fully supported and, as a result, aren't sharing your highest frequency with the world. Be your best, do your best, demand the best, expect the best, receive the best, and put your best out into the world so everyone can receive your best too. Think of it this way. Would you rather hang out in a world where everyone feels happy and well taken care of and aspires to be the best they can be? Or would you rather be in a world where people live in fear and shame and scrimp and hold themselves back? What would each scenario do to your energy? One of the best things you can do to improve the world is to improve yourself. It's a grassroots effort. So if you need money to improve your life, get over it already and go get yourself some. Because this isn't just about you, okay? In order to go get some money, get very clear on what kind of life will make you truly happy. And be honest. What kind of experiences and possessions will support you in the work you want to do and in the kind of life you'd love to live? If you're truly happy living a simple life in a yurt, surrounded by people you love, trading little trinkets you've carved out of cow bones for food, and making just enough to get by, that's one thing. But pretending you don't want more than you already have because you can't afford it or feel guilty and pretentious for wanting it, that's another. That is called being a weenie. Determine what your personal, truest version of success looks like 
no comparing yourself to others, please. Figure out how much it will cost and then set out with steadfast determination to manifest the money you need to create it. Fourth rule of wealth consciousness, raise your frequency. Money on its own means nothing. A $100 bill sitting on a table is a piece of paper. It's the energy around it that makes it relevant. That $100 bill could have been slipped into a birthday card from your granny, or you could have stolen it from your best friend when she wasn't looking, or you could have earned it by doing something you loved or by doing something you hated. In each situation, the energy around the money is different. Nothing has any value other than the value we put on it. Similarly, the monetary value we put on things and services has energy. Someone could sell a t-shirt in a store for $10. Another person can sell the exact same t-shirt in some fancy store for $1,000. How much is a gold watch worth? How much is a broken watch worth that was owned by Michael Jackson? It's all make-believe, or rather, it's all what we make ourselves believe. If we believe we're worth $10 an hour, that's the frequency we'll put out and that's the kind of client or job we'll attract. If we believe we're worth $1,000 an hour, that's the frequency we'll put out and that's the kind of client or employment opportunities we'll attract. The key word is believe. You can't be shitting bricks and charging more than you believe you're worth and expect to receive it. And you can't charge less than you believe you're worth and expect to flourish because you'll be pissed off. In order to create wealth, you must bring yourself into energetic alignment with the money you desire to manifest. Three people can do the same thing for a living. Let's say they're chiropractors, for example. One makes 50,000 a year, one makes 100,000 a year, one makes a million dollars a year. Is the guy who makes a million dollars that much better than the guy who makes 50,000? And how do you put a price tag on his betterness? Is the way he cracks someone's back $950,000 a year times better than the guy who makes $50,000? He may be more skilled or have more experience, but then again, he may not. But what it ultimately comes down to is his decision of his worth. He's operating at a $1 million frequency, so that's what he's charging and getting. Money is an exchange of energy between people. When you charge your clients from a certain frequency, or demand a certain salary, you attract clients and employers who are already at that frequency. You're not putting a gun to their heads. You are not the only person offering these goods and services. They're free to work with or hire someone who's at a different frequency than you are, but they're coming to you. And part of what you offer is the opportunity to meet at your frequency. Lowering your frequency out of fear leaves everyone vibrating at a lower frequency. If it's important to you to offer your services for free or rock bottom prices for people in serious deep doo-doo, then you can have a charitable leg of your business or some sort of scholarship dealio or find a patron or get grants or seek another means of income that sustains you while you work for free. But exhausting yourself because you need to work 8 million hours in order to survive because you feel guilty charging what you're worth is real low level stuff. You ultimately wind up helping fewer people because you're tired and crabby and less effective. So where are you at energetically with what you make? And where do you want to be? You can figure this out by getting nice and clear on the kind of life you desire to live, figuring out what you need to be making to manifest this reality, and set about matching your frequency to your desired income. If you're nowhere near where you want to be, keep pushing yourself to raise your prices or seek higher paying jobs. Surround yourself with higher frequency experiences and people. Beef up your education and know-how. Make vision boards of what you want your life to look like. Again, raising your frequency is like developing a muscle. Strengthening it is a process. Fifth rule of wealth consciousness, stay in shape. You must keep your frequency high and your belief in limitless possibility strong to manifest your dream house or your goal of going to the Olympics or to call in your soulmate. Otherwise, you run the risk of sliding backwards into having your father's lame relationship with money or your mother's terror of being visible or your divorced parents' mistrust of intimacy. When it comes to being mighty about money, one of the best ways to do this is to read wealth consciousness books all the time, over and over. 
My two staples have always been Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill and The Science of Getting Rich by Wallace Waddles, but there are plenty of others out there. Find some that work for you and read them for at least 30 minutes every single day. Surround yourself with inspiring people who don't think money is bad and those who either already have it or are intent on making it. Watch your thoughts and your words. Make a conscious effort to keep your positive financial mindset strong and unwavering. Get into reality about how much you want to make and why. There are countless ways to make serious money, and depending on what business you're in, they will obviously vary, but there are some general rules that apply across the board. Start by thinking about the life you'd love to live and why. Figure out exactly how much money you need to manifest to make it happen. If you don't know how much it would cost to build your dream house, do the research. If you want to travel, figure out where and by when and do the math on exactly how much it'll all cost. If you want a lifestyle where you eat out more and wear nicer clothes, crunch the numbers. How much money do you now need to make per year? Per month? Per hour? The universe responds to details. The universe responds to energy. The universe responds to badasses. There's a big difference between walking around saying you want to make a million dollars a year and having crystal clear intentions, fierce desire, and hell-bent action towards specific goals. Make a list. Be super specific about exactly what it is, how much it will cost, why you want it, how it will make you feel, etc. You need to be in a full-on lather about it and want it so badly that it is not negotiable. It will and it must happen regardless of how long it takes. Decide what it is you want and write down the exact cost. Make it urgent. Ever notice how when your rent's due in a week and you have no idea how you're going to pay it, or if you really need a specific amount of money for a specific urgent purpose like getting a throbber of a rotten tooth pulled, that you always manage to somehow figure out how to get the money you need just in time? Okay. Usually, a check that you had forgotten about arrives in the mail or an unexpected freelance job comes in, or you suddenly develop the nerve to ask someone for a loan, or you sell grandma's jewelry, or you compete with the five-year-old selling lemonade down the street and make a killing. You shift from wasting your time whining and worrying because you're suddenly too busy making it happen. This is the power of clarity, urgency, not screwing around. The money is there if you really, truly desire it. It's just a matter of being so serious about it that you don't stray from the path of manifesting it no matter what gets thrown in it. The trick is to treat your dreams with this same urgency and determination. It's one thing to kick ass when your back is against the wall and you've got to come up with your kid's tuition, and quite another to create self-imposed urgency so you stay the course until you've created your dream life instead of settling back into the big snooze. You need a sense of urgency to keep from dropping the ball when it gets difficult and sliding down into thinking, ah, screw it, I'm fine living next door to a kennel full of barking dogs. It's nothing getting some earplugs and boarding up my windows can't fix. Instead of being in reaction mode, it's about being in action mode. It's about no longer acting like a victim, letting your circumstances control your life, and instead acting like a superhero creating a life that has you waking up in giddy disbelief that you get to be you. A great way to psych yourself into upgrading your life is by raising your bottom line. So often we take the massive leaps of faith only when we have to, when we need to put out some sort of fire, aka pay off some huge bill. Because this is about changing you, not just about changing your income, why not decide to be the kind of person who always has a certain amount of money in the bank? Be someone who's not in struggle and panic and constantly behind the eight ball. Come up with a figure and decide your account will never go below it. Make it non-negotiable. For example, if you decide that you will always have $2,000 in your checking account and refuse to see your balance go under it, it will light the fire under your ass to generate income the second you get close to dipping below it. Or decide that you will always donate 10% of what you make to charity, no matter what. Make a new bottom line. Get yourself out of struggle by changing your mindset and being conscious of how you deal with, generate, and receive your money. Envision yourself with this money and the specific things and or experiences it's going to provide. As I said, money on its own means nothing. 
It's what we attach to it that gives it meaning and inspires us to have it in our lives. It's what this money makes us feel like that puts us in the proper tizzy to manifest it. Write a mantra that you can run over and over in your mind to help you manifest the money you desire. I see myself making $150,000 by December 31st by being an accountant and serving 30 new clients in the best way possible. I'm so grateful for this $150,000 by December 31st that allows me to take my family on a vacation to Bali and renovate our kitchen and donate money to build schools in Kenya. I see myself in the jungle with my kids and my wife. We're staying at my favorite hotel in Ubud. I feel so happy for being able to give my children this incredible, life-changing experience and for bringing my wife such joy. I can also see the kitchen and how happy it's made my wife to finally have it. I see the faces of the kids in Kenya as they write on the chalkboard in the school I've helped pay for. I feel such joy from being able to make a difference in their lives. I'm so grateful for this $150,000 that I will make by December 31st. I see the awesome clients I get to work with who are more than happy to pay me $100 an hour for my services. This money is mine. It is on its way to me now. I see it in my bank account and I am so grateful for it. Write one that makes you feel invincible. Read it over and over every day. See it and feel it and become a crazy person about it. I know this sounds like a pain in the ass, but do it anyway, because trust me, it works. Lame, vague goals are the best way to live a lame, vague life. If you want to knock it out of the park, you need to know exactly what you're shooting for and be so excited about it that you're almost annoying to yourself. Take hell-bent for glory action. Do every single thing you can think of to manifest this money slash new lifestyle. If you got your own business, what new programs could you offer or what new products could you sell? Can you raise your prices? Leverage your time, sign on bigger and fancier clients, sell more to the clients you already have, pick up a part-time job. If you work for someone else, ask for a raise or look for a new job that pays more. Listen to everyone around you with new ears. Is there an opportunity for a new, better paying situation there that you may have not noticed before? Is there a position you can create or suggest that would get you at your desired income level? Continue to do everything humanly possible to magnetize it to you and then surrender to the universe and be on the lookout for something unexpected to come in. An inheritance, someone who wants to pay you for your expertise, a brilliant idea that you'd normally pass over as too out of the question, or a conversation between two people looking for someone just like you to help redesign their new offices. Look for some opportunity or person to make an appearance that's not in your usual path of income. You are leaping into a new reality here. It's not your job to know the how. It's your job to ask for what you want and wait to discover the how. Then take action. When the unexpected money or the new job or the big client comes in is up to the universe. It can literally happen immediately or it can take years. Your job is to do everything you can to manifest it and have unshakable faith that the universe is moving it towards you in perfect timing. Get mentoring. Surround yourself with people who know more than you do. Read about them, study them, hang out with them, and hire them. Be on the lookout for the perfect coach or mentor or book or seminar, because when the student is ready, the teacher appears. Pay attention to who and what flies in your radar and learn as much as you can from them. Love yourself, and you will have it all.